Thank you, Debbie. Good morning. It's a lovely, lovely Sunday morning. Glad you made it out through the, through the blizzard. And happy Mother's Day for all of you mothers and all of us that have mothers. I guess we can appreciate uh, what mothers mean to us. It's interesting that our, our series here is on prayer because I'm thinking that probably the most important uh, thing a mother does is pray. Uh, and I think most of us, or a lot of us, we might not even be here if it wasn't for our mother's prayers. And so I think that is something that we need to thank them for. Are there any announcements? Things are going right along very good. That's good. Okay. Tad. Todd. May 23rd is Deacon Sunday, uh, split the offering between Bible memory and five little stones. Okay, May 23rd, that's a couple of weeks. Anything else? For all of you that came out to Sunday school, we want to thank you for that, and I think we got off to a pretty good start, Pastor Jeff, so uh, keep that uh, in mind as we move forward. We'll, we, uh, we'll continue, I guess, right? Okay, praises. What has God uh, done for you this week? Anything that you, re that you remember or that you reflect on? Because I'm sure he has. I'm sure God has done, he done marvelous things for, for all of us every day. So, yeah. We I just want to say that I'm thankful that my two boys are home from college and they're home safe. They beat the snow. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> there you go. And don't forget Bruce. He's over. Or Brian. Bruce. Brian. It's okay, Bruce. You'll be all right. Okay. I even do that to my own kids. So, yeah, it's one of those things that happen. All right. Prayer concerns. How can we pray today? Since this is our... It's talking a lot about prayer. I'm sure all of us have little things that we uh, need to bring to the Lord. And so <clears throat> even if they're not mentioned, the Lord knows if you, if you brought it to the Lord. And there are, I know, those that are still fighting uh, illness and disease. And, and uh, you want me to read that, don't you? No, you don't have to, but oh. they're, they're okay. listed. I'd put my glasses on to read that, so I'm not going to do that. So, yeah, they're in here. Uh, keep lifting these people up in your prayers and uh, include Pastor Jeff and Jen in, uh, in your prayers as well. So, okay, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Father God, thank you for uh, this day. We just thank you for mothers and the special love that they give, the care that they give, and the, and the prayers that they offer, Father we know mothers have a special place in your heart. And we thank you for them. And we just pray that each mother will have a great day today. So we, uh, we ask your blessing on our service. We pray for those that need your, a healing touch. Those that might need some peace, comfort. Father, just be with, with all of those. And we thank you that we can bring all of these things to you. And pray in your name. Amen. Worship team, I guess, if you're ready. And Brother Paul, are you ready? Yeah. Well, special today, Paul's going to do a song for us. So. so hold your applause till he's finished, okay? <laughs> Please stand. Our song is For the Beauty of the Earth.
for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the wonder of each hour, of the day and of the night, hill and mill and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light, Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our hymn of grace. In 
the valley by the wildwood When day fades away into night I would frame from the spot of my childhood Win my way to the mansions of light Oh, come, 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 come
he bled and to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great Thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Praise team practices every Wednesday night, and Paul's been coming to those practices because he says, I need to practice more. <laughs> and I did a little estimating, and I believe that Paul has probably sang nearly 100,000 songs in his life. Because when he was a young boy and his sister and him would go to the barn to do chores, they would sing to the cows. <laughs> and at the age of 16, he joined the church choir, and that was in 1943 because he was born in 1927, and if you didn't hear Lon earlier, he's uh, 93 now, or Jeff or somebody. So, uh, when Paul was younger too, I'm just telling you some trivia about Paul because this is, <laughs> this is important. <laughs> he was part of a men's group called Men of Music, and they would sing at other churches and travel all over uh, singing at, uh, events, and they even recorded an album. And Paul has that album, and uh, I don't know if there's any albums for sale anymore, but uh, in, in his day, uh, he just sang and sang and sang. And so that's why I believe he probably sang 100,000 songs in his life. <laughs> I, I'm in trouble. Uh, Paul, Paul is humble, and he doesn't like a lot of recognition, but I, I'm giving him some anyway. So I just wanted to share with you that Paul's life has always been all about music and that uh, even though he was a farmer and a bus driver and uh, did so much during his life, he always made time for music, especially in church and worship songs and, and all that. And that his commitment and his dedication and his desire to share his love for music with others his whole life should be an inspiration to us. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Paul. You know, I was thinking as he was singing that if I get to be that age, I'd just be happy to be able to stand. <laughs> I, mean, I don't have to sing. So you're pretty incredible. And we thank you, Paul. You want to say something, don't you? We got time for, for a word? For a word? Is that right up there close to your mouth? Well, <laughs> I tell you what. <laughs> Diener, I call him Diener. <laughs> you got to have a pocket full of chocolate. 
in order to get along with dinner. <laughs> All right, thank you. Have a seat. All right, well, it's uh, time for our scripture reading, and our scripture reading this morning is the Lord's Prayer. So instead of reading it, we're going to pray it, okay? So if you would pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And it's not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Pastor Jeff. A little bit. Good morning. We're glad to have you here this morning. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. Um, in the past, I think we've given out flowers, um, carnations or roses to the mothers. This year, I wanted to give you something that you could plant so that it could die when it's frosted. Um, I'm kidding. Um, hopefully, warm weather is coming. But uh, I have, uh, I don't know what these are. What are these, Kate? Petunias. Okay, Petunias. And um, we got those from Mary's Plant Shop, which, uh, what a beautiful place. Love that. It's, uh, it's just warmer there in the greenhouses than it is at home. And so uh, if, you, uh, if your mom is here and uh, you would like to honor her, um, or there's no children here, and, and you know, husbands or spouses or whatever, come up and, and grab a flower and take it to your, to your mom right now. Please. And I have more in the back if we need. Um, I got straw in all of those and they were unattractive, so I left them in the back. <laughs> I want everybody to have a flower who wants one. Guys, if there's a lady that needs a flower, you might need to take care of them. Go ahead and get that done. Take care of all our ladies, all our wonderful moms. There you go. Absolutely. Nobody, no, no mom left behind. Oh, beautiful. No mom left behind. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. All right. So I Man, so many people here today. Praise the Lord. Um, we got our um, we got our COVID shot what, last Tuesday, and uh, we didn't die. Praise the Lord. Um, <clears throat> actually, nothing happened. So uh, it was great. Because Jen and I, I don't know how many times we have been like right up next to COVID. We just over and over and over and over and over. But uh, my cancer doctor, he guilted me into it. So, anyways. Um, Sunday school this morning, I want to say was uh, thank you for everybody that came out and was a part of that. Tad taught in here, Bruce taught over there. I think uh, uh, Tad's group had about six, they had about eight or nine in there. I had two 
in the junior senior high and I won't be the normal junior senior high teacher Robin's gonna help me with that I still I still need volunteers and so Robin said I could make her do anything I wanted her to do so she's gonna help me with that because I'm gonna do the elementary Jen and I are gonna do that together and so um, what I discovered happens you know when in Robin's out this week too she was out last week and this week and she'll be back next week but um, um, I have to fill up, cover all the bases and so I need volunteers I've got plenty of volunteers for nursery Shelly and Tom were in there taking care of the nursery kids and I assume that was a pleasant experience yeah praise the Lord and and Kate and Lynette have signed up to be backups so if so that you know that if if something should happen or you just it's like it's too much today um, you can uh, you can let them know but I still would like some help for junior senior high and elementary uh, elementary age so please um, I have learned something I, I used to be one of those pastors that wanted to do all the work I don't want to do hardly any work anymore uh, I, and, and God's taught me that it's it's the church that does it together it's not it's not the one one guy or one gal doing all the work it's all of us working together making it happen so I'm I'm inviting you I'm asking you to get involved at the next level and if you're not going and you're not being part of something I'm asking you to stretch yourself and be part of that literally it was a half hour didn't it didn't it go like that? even though I bored you guys didn't it go like boom is that by the time we had our second donut it was over <laughs> all right <laughs> what's that <laughs> amen they weren't very, I'll be honest they weren't very good donuts they were hostess it, hostess isn't what hostess used to be man when I was a kid a hostess cupcake that was a treat now it's not the same thing it's just not that they were bought by another company they're, they're not the same but they're still better than little Debbie I would say hostess little Debbie um, I know my sweet treats I do <laughs> would you turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6 we looked last week at uh, the first part of that where Jesus was talking about how we pray and um, so and, and Lon mentioned at Mother's Day the things we have learned at the hands of our mother uh, or our grandmothers and um, we're so blessed uh, they have taught us so many things and um, I wish uh, my mom passed away a couple years ago I wish she could be here with us and um, I miss her um, and she was a good mom she was she was a good mom um, and I had a great grandmother too uh, a very a very good grandmother and I learned a lot of things from them and so we're gonna I'm gonna I'm going to teach from Matthew 6, but I'm going to start in Luke 11. You don't need to turn there because I'm just going to look at one verse. Because in Luke 11, this is what happens, which leads us to Jesus' teaching on prayer. Uh, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of, the, of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. And here's something that we should take to heart. When 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 the disciples ask Jesus to teach them something and Jesus does that's something we want to know that's something we want to learn and so they say Jesus teach us to pray as John John the Baptist taught his disciples and so we can find that in Luke but we're gonna look at it in Matthew and it it begins then in Matthew 9 and we just prayed it but I want to talk about it because it's important it's one of the few templates or formulas I, I hate to say the word formula but that God gives us to help us to pray and being a pastor I love to pray um, and I think when I was a young pastor you always wanted opportunities to pray out loud and I know a lot of people don't like to pray out loud it makes them nervous and I think part of that is we think that people will judge us based on our prayers but uh, that shouldn't happen here this should be a place and it is we just watched Paul who's 93 years old sing sing his heart and he loves to sing and I I love preaching but I also love to sing and it's hard to do both but I sing all the time and 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 here in our church no matter how old you are if you feel compelled by the Lord to do something this is where you should be able to do it we don't want to hold anybody back 
I remember for years in my home church, we had a lady who couldn't sing to save her life, and she sang all the time. She did, and it was horrible, but I have never forgotten that, that the church made room for her to exercise her heart's desire. I get it. I do a lot of things, and some of those things aren't my gift, and actually some of the things I'm not very good at, but sometimes in the church we make room for each other to do things that aren't necessarily our our wheelhouse but Jesus is teaching us how to pray and so we want to take that to heart and we want to uh, learn what he's got to say and so in verse 9 of Matthew 6 it says this this then is how you should pray this is Jesus speaking our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. And it stops there. And then he goes into verse 14 and 15 where he talks about forgiveness. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. I find as a pastor sometimes when people ask me questions about things, I give complicated answers. Jesus does not give us a complicated response when they say, teach us to pray. It is the most simplistic prayer. Uh, and scripture is filled with prayers. And I believe that God answers all prayers that are, that are um, prayed with a sincere heart uh, by his people. And um, this, is, this is just so not complicated. And it begins with our Father who art in heaven. And I love that. Imagine, now, I don't know if we can imagine, if we worshipped any other God, he's not necessarily considered or she's not necessarily considered to be a parent. Jesus describes God the Father as a parent. Now, I understand, and it's Mother's Day, not everybody has had the experience of a good parent. Um, and that's because we live in a fallen world. And we have some lousy parents out there. But they're on the other side of that fence. We have all known some parents who, who we are so grateful to have had as a mother and a father. And we don't want to let the bad ones diminish the good ones. But let's not be naive. But in Jesus' day, he described God, the Father, the creator of everything, the author and perfecter, of, of the world, of our lives, of our faith, as a parent. And, not, uh, and he says, our Father who art in heaven, and I don't want you to get caught up in mother, uh, father, mother figure. Both parents are important. Both are necessary. And, but, but parent, and even in this text, he uses the word Abba, which is this, this term of endearment, which would mean daddy, which is this, this very loving, gentle term in relation to God. And that's how Jesus wants us to approach our father like a parent. I know there have been times in my life I was afraid to go to my parent because I, I thought I might be punished. And the Bible does say that um, the, beginning, uh, the fear of the Lord is beginning of wisdom or the beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord. Um, but, but Jesus describes him as this person, as this being that we can go to and that we know, what does a parent do? A parent cuff, comforts, a parent protects, a parent provides, a, a, a parent builds up, a parent encourages. That's how God is describing, or Jesus is describing God, the Father, in that way. Who doesn't want to go to that kind of person? And so that's what he says simply. And that helps us get in the right mindset. We don't have to pray like, uh, you know, some complicated opening that gets us into the presence of Lord. We know that, that Jesus has made it possible for us to go directly into the throne room and speak directly to God. And he's described as a parent. And I don't want you to miss that. I think it's beautiful. And then he goes on to say, our Father who art in heaven, or I'm sorry, um, yeah, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. He reminds us, and this is what I talked about last week, that not only is a parent, but he's holy, he's set apart. And, and last week, I, I really worked hard to make this premise because Jesus talked about don't pray, babbling, running on, uh, uh, 
to go into your room, pray in secret, and God will reward you. Those who've been running their mouths, they've received their reward in full. There was a lot of talk about God answers prayers when our heart condition, when, when, when we approach prayer with the right heart and the right attitude. And we've all thrown prayers up there. We have. But if, if somebody, we had a little wilder go to the emergency room earlier in the week. And, and whenever that happens with one of your grandbabies, that's pretty frightening. And they were in the r- emergency room for a ridiculous amount of time, from like 3.30 to 10.30 at night. And, and I just, I prayed all day, that whole time. I never stopped. I just prayed. And there was an earnestness about that. And, and I got to be honest with you, I think that's different than a lot of prayers that I pray. I really had this desire to see that little baby be okay. And that would be true for all of us. And, and I just want to remind you, when we pray, it should be approached as a task that's worth doing and that we want to be intentional in it. And it shouldn't be just this, this careless, callous thing that we do that doesn't matter. Just remember that. And that's what he's talking about. Holy. God is holy. We shouldn't approach God with, with, um, with the wrong attitude. I watched uh, The Chosen again the other night. And it was, uh, they were at uh, Nick at night, which is uh, John chapter 3, where Nicodemus talks with Jesus. And, I, and again, a lot of that is subjective in the sense that they are, they are speculating on these might be the, the things that happened when those events took place. And in it, Nicodemus recognizes that Jesus is the Messiah. And he has this Moses moment at the end where they're parting, where he gets on his knees before Jesus because he recognizes that he's God. And the cool thing that they did is Jesus picked Nicodemus off of his knees and brought him up to his level. And prayer is like that when we recognize who we're talking to. Think of the two boys in Luke 15. There were two brothers. There was the one who said to dad, give me, give me my inheritance, and, which is a strange thing. I don't think I could ever say to my dad, you know, hey, has he bought a boat? He bought like a 50-foot boat. I'm like, give me your boat. Like, I'm in t- you're going to die soon. Give me your boat. That's what the boy did. He said to his father, give me... Give me your stuff. He didn't say, give me my stuff. Give me your stuff. And what did the father do? He gave it to him. Which again, this is a picture of God. And then the other boy, the boy that doesn't run off and squander all, that, all his inheritance. He actually runs, he spends his inheritance and comes home. And what does the father do? Takes him back. But what about the other boy? He was just as disrespectful. He's like mad at his dad. How, how come I've been here the whole time? I've been religious all my life. And this is how you treat me? You take in this worthless kid? And the father's like, everything I have is yours. Sometimes I think we approach prayer like those two boys. God's an ATM. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And I know when we get sick, why me? I have been so good. Why me? We do the Job thing. Job does this. Job kind of whines like, hey, I'm a good guy. And Job was a good guy. Why'd you do this to me? And then the other boy, I've been religious. I should get, you know, why is this? God's holy. He's our parent, but he's holy. He's special. He's unique. He's set apart. And thank God that he is. Because if he wasn't, what you would be receiving from him would not be of any kind of satisfactory nature. You can get from the world, but the world will never give to you like God will give to you. It will never satisfy like what God gives you satisfies. It'll literally be like a hostess product. It's not the same thing. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Uh, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so he, he's recognizing, helping us recognize that God is our parent but he's, he's set apart, he's holy, and he wants us to pray his will, and that's really the key to success in having your prayers answered. If you pray God's will, God will answer your prayers. 
I, Jen and I prayed in my office this morning, and I've been praying all week, Lord, make Sunday school work. I, I honestly believe that God's word is true, that we're supposed to make disciples. And I get Sunday school is only one part of making a disciple. It's one part of the puzzle. It's another workout. It's another routine that we're adding to help you grow spiritual muscle. That's all we're doing so that you can become a disciple. But I'm praying that. Because it's God's will. And I want to see that come to pass. And so I want you to pray God's will. Now, I get it. I've got a prayer list filled with people's names. I went and saw Joe and Jane this week. And I'm not, I, I assume her cardio version worked. I need to check. But I, I, want to, I, want to, I want Joe to have a clear PET scan. And I talked to Susie, or I talked to Ron, I should say. And Ron was, Ron was upbeat but a little discouraged because Susie's got some spots again on her liver which means she's got to go back in for treatment. And that's discouraging. I had a church secretary that worked for me. She was diagnosed right after I was diagnosed. She had uh, ovarian cancer. And she got treatment, and it went away completely, which this is a mystery. It went away completely, and we all rejoiced in the miracle. Within 30 days, the tumor was back bigger than it was the first time, and then she died within another month or two. And I, I prayed. I prayed for her healing, but it didn't happen. I prayed for a lot of people to be healed, and it didn't happen. Uh, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to stop praying for people to be healed and that God's going to move. If we were in the Luke passage where he teaches on prayer, he actually finishes that statement about this is how you pray with the, the parable about knocking the woman who comes and knocks on the door and wants bread late at night. And he says, keep, she kept knocking and she kept knocking and she kept knocking till she got what she wanted. And so God is inviting us. And if, if I took you to Matthew uh, 5 where it talks about ask, seek, and knock, it's a, it's a Greek imperative which means always be asking, always be seeking, always be knocking, always be praying. Don't give up. Even if you don't get the response that you want. God will sort it out in the end, but I will not stop you from praying. I don't want you to go out and pray for something stupid, uh, which would be like, you know what? I need a motorcycle. I'm gonna, because I knew a guy that did that. He says, I'm gonna sit out in my front yard on a motorcycle helmet and pray that God will give me a motorcycle. I'm like, well, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. <laughs> you know what? I don't think he ever got it. I don't, it never happened. It never happened. Um, but, but that goes back to, you know, hard intent. What, what are the things that we're praying for? You know, I, I used to pray for my kids' spouses when I drove them to school. That was my habit of praying. I hope, Lord, that you bring a, a good spouse into their life. And now I'm blessed to know their spouses. Uh, and, they're, and they're wonderful people. And uh, to, see, to see those things, to see God answer those prayers. Pray, 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 pray. But the goal is we want to pray God's will. And here's the key. And you say, I don't know what God's will is. Get in the word. Come to Bible study. Come to church. Get involved in another a small group or something or a, a, know the word. When you know the word, you'll know God's will. It's that simple. God gave us his word so that we would walk in the light and not in the dark. And I don't, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm taught walking through Genesis 1 with the kiddos this morning. I don't have all the answers. There are some things we won't know till heaven. Thank God the scripture says we look through a glass darkly. We see in part and we know in part. So there's some knowledge that's coming. But I want to pray God's will over my spouse, over my children, over my grandchildren, and for this church. And so I think I'm doing that. I don't want to be so prideful. But I'm going to pray the things that God wants us to do. And I want you to pray those same things too. I get it. I think sometimes for us, church is that extra thing we've added to our life and it's a burden. Oh, we got to go to church. Oh, we got to go to Sunday school. Oh, we got to do this. Get your life in order. Figure out the things that are more important. You know what? I've done this. There are a lot of things I want to do. Now, because of the injury, I had to give up a lot of things. And that was God teaching me a very powerful lesson. And I, I have tried not to violate that. So now, I don't do anything that I want to do unless I have done ministry first. My ministry is the first thing that I do. When I get up in the morning, uh, I get into the Word, or I don't do the stuff that I want to do until the sermon is done. I don't. 
The sermon comes first. Prayer comes first. Um, and I'm not, yeah, you know what? It's your life. You order it correctly, and you come back and see if you put it in the right order if God doesn't bless it. Because I guarantee you, when you live out of order, you're not blessed. You experience the chaos that your own disorder creates in your life. It just does. When we do things our way, we get that reward. When we do things God's way, we're blessed. Let me go on. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. You know what? That's not rocket science. He's our provider. God wants to provide. He provides all our needs. He provides for our food. He provides for our clothes. If you read the Sermon on the Mount, he talks about what, you know, uh, we're going to sing this song here in a moment, His Eye is on the Sparrow. God takes care of everything and he can take care of us but part of the problem is we're outside of God's will we're doing things our way and so things aren't coming to us the way that we want them to come and we blame God doesn't work that way God was very specific with Israel live like this and I will bless you Israel's like I'm gonna put one foot out and one foot in and let's see what happens and and they lost, they lost their estate. They were evicted from the promised land. They became slaves, or they became, um, yeah, prisoners in another land uh, until God brought them back because they wanted their cake and they wanted to eat it too. But God wants to provide. God wants to meet every need that you have, the, the most basic needs, the, the needs that satisfy the desires of our heart. I'd like to tell you that Jen can satisfy the desires of my heart. She can't. It has to be God first. And then our relationship is gold. I have to love God first. I remember, uh, I, was, uh, I am a member of the Christian Motorcycle Association. I have been for years. And we knew the founder for many years. And, and sadly, um, and I don't think he's in charge of it anymore, he ended up leaving his wife because the Lord told him to leave his wife and marry another woman. Sorry, I can't get behind that. That's biblically wrong. Uh, biblically wrong. And so I haven't really been involved in the CMA since then. And I don't think he's in, I think they've disassociated with him. But uh, uh, it's really sad um, when those things happen. When, when we take matters into our own hands. You want to experience blessing from God? Let go. And let him let him fill. That, that, it might mean a season of not having something because you're trusting and you're waiting, but I promise you, God will meet your needs. He will give you what you need. He will. My favorite story, I, I had interviewed for a job that I wanted. I desperately wanted it. Um, it would have been a job that was a game changer. I was a lithographer and... Um, I was going to go to work for a company that covered like seven states, a large company. At the time, they were called Tossigs. And uh, it didn't happen. It just didn't happen. I, I was up late that night with one of the babies because they had a cold or something. And so I wasn't on point for that interview. And, and that, I, I consider that the reason I didn't get the job. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't all pretty. It just wasn't. It just, if you don't think looks matter, they do in an interview. And uh, it just didn't go well. And somebody else got the job. And so I got mad at God. I said, all right, you're going to let us be in poverty for longer. I'm going to go to seminary with what little bit of army money I have left. Uh, or I, went to, I didn't go to seminary. I went to Taylor. I went to Taylor and did a semester. That's all I could afford it was a semester of college. Tried to pay for it in my own strength. Tried to do it. Went on. Uh, and then eventually what happened was, um, I don't remember how, how it all played out, but we were praying and begging for God to do something. God actually gave me that job, and then the church actually called me into ministry and gave me a scholarship. So instead of getting a bachelor's degree, I got a master's degree. I just passed the bachelor's thing up completely. And um, went and got my master's, and then uh, um, I got that job. They came, they actually called me. They said, hey, somebody told us about you and we want to interview you. And, and then they're like, well, I guess we interviewed you like six or seven months ago and God gave me the job. 
That's how God works. Sometimes you've got to let go and you've got to trust that he's got your best interests at heart. We try to do things in our own strength and that's our greatest failure. We're supposed to do things in whose strength? God, let him provide for your needs. Then he goes on and he, he has the money scripture. Forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And that's why he adds verses 14 and 15. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, don't miss this, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. I got no other way to say it. Forgiveness is conditional. It is based on your willingness to forgive those who have something against you. And it's the hardest thing to do, to forgive those who hurt you. We're always asking God to forgive us, but we're not forgiving others who have stuff against us. We need to do the work. You want to experience freedom in the Lord? Let go of, thing, let go of unforgiveness. I can tell you right now, and I, and I know you will tell me, you don't understand. I understand. I do. I understand. I know what it's like to be in the presence of somebody who hurt you, who hurt you at the core of your being. And maybe they still hate you. Let it go. Bitterness and unforgiveness and resentment, it's a poison that only you take. The other person doesn't even care. They're not like walking around all upset about it. We are. If you still have this emotional stuff going on when, when you're in the presence of that person or you think about that, it's time to let it go. And if you can't see somebody that can help you, let it go. Forgiveness is the key, really. And here's the good news. Why we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We, if anybody has a debt against anybody, we had a debt against God. And he wiped the slate clean. He wiped it clean. And we're free. Why wouldn't I do that to somebody that's got something against me? Why wouldn't I do that? I've told you this uh, illustration before. I remember I had two late, or a lady in the church and she was like, well, this woman's mad at me and she won't forgive me or whatever. And I'm like, well, is she a Christian? It's like, yeah. Okay. She's got to. <laughs> if she's willing to not forgive you, something's fundamentally wrong. What, what, what kind of, I don't want to know that kind of Christian. I can't forgive you. What's wrong with you? I can't forgive you. Man, if I've ever said that, smack me in the head with a brick. I can't forgive you. Then I don't really understand. I, I, I have not come to grips with what God has done for me. I can't forgive you. And I get it. Hey, if you, I hear somebody will probably hurt your feelings today. If you go out in the world today or you go out in the world tomorrow, somebody's going to hurt you. Forgive them. How many times? What if they do the same thing five times? Forgive them every time. Wait, can we put a number on it? 490. 491, take them to task. I'm kidding. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God does not tempt us. The scripture clearly tells us that. We're, we're tempted because we live in a world full of temptation, but God delivers us. And I would just remind you of 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except what's common to mankind. And God is faithful. He'll not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can, you can stand up, uh, so that you can endure it. My life verse is, that, is this verse. Sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. In other words, there are all sorts of things that want to own Jeffrey. And Jeffrey has to wake up and smell the roses and decide what boundaries he's going to put in his life to protect him from those things. I meet with a young man, um, and we talk about um, pornography. Uh, um, we talk about how we can establish boundaries to make sure that we can keep our heart pure. And when he came to me, he was wrapped up in it bad. 
He's gone three months porn free. Now, that's not easy to do because it's all around us. And when I say porn, I'm talking about even simple stuff. Simple magazine ads or the stuff that you see in your news feeds. But he's decided to master that sin instead of letting that sin master him. And that's one example of many things. Many things. You are the one that God is saying, order your life rightly. You can set your hedges and you can set your boundaries. There are things I don't do. And if I'm doing it, Jen reminds me what it is and then I fix it. She does. She, uh, she does. And she does a good job of that. And finally, you may wonder, what about the line at the end? For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Where did that come from? It's not actually in the, in the scriptures. It was not unusual if you were Jewish and you said a prayer that you ended with your own personal benediction. And actually, that statement doesn't show up until the Didache. The Didache means teaching. It was a, a, an ancient work that was used to help us understand uh, how to live the Christian life, how to baptize, how to do communion. Um, I don't even think in the Catholic Church they say that at the end of the prayer. Um, and I don't have a problem saying it because it's true. But let me remind you in this. God gave us this very simple template and then you can finish out with your own words. You can add your own stuff. He is our father. He's our parent. Tell him about your day. Tell him what makes you sad, what makes you happy. Tell him why you're hurting or why you're filled with joy. I love what Lon said. Do we have praises? Do we have prayer concerns? Let's talk about the good stuff too. I said this to my grandkids last night. I said, when you guys come over and visit us, do we sit around and talk about negative stuff? They're like, no, because we don't. Sometimes, you ever been around people that when you're with them, all they, all they talk about is bad stuff or negative stuff? I feel bad. I never want to visit those people. I don't. Because it's like, it's like visiting Eeyore. <laughs> oh, it's another bad day again. Get saved. Well, and that's, not, that's, that's a cheap shot. People who love Jesus have bad days. They do. So I apologize. Have the worship team come on up. Prayer is not complicated. It's just a simple thing. <clears throat> God has given us a template. Jesus has given us this template. Pray it. I, I love it that we pray it in the service. It's God's words. It's true. Pray it. Make it your own. <clears throat> For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You know, it sounds a lot like worship to me. I finish this prayer and then I remind I remind myself and I remind God that he's number one. He's of the highest place. He's the best. We're going to do His Eyes on the Sparrow. And, I, and I've told you this. I love this song. I, the last time I, um, there was a little boy who was shot in the head in Fort Wayne out in front of the, the Southside YMCA. And he sang this song at a Promise Keepers event. And I've never forgotten it. Because I was, it just was remarkable that he survived the shooting. And that was his response. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. And we could talk to him anytime about anything. Please stand. <clears throat> Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me.
I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. for mothers. Thank you for fathers. Thank you for parents. Thank you for that picture so that we know as we pray to you that we're praying to a parent, to somebody who cares for us, who, who values us, who wants to, to meet our needs and to bless us and to love us. We are so blessed. Thank you for this church. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> 